Yes, I'll just start from my immediate left. So, uh, Dr. Crow, if you'd like to talk about your work and what what the uh, what that is. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Bio sorry bio <laughs> That's all right. Um, so I have a, a very brief uh, slide pack that I could use. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So um, I've only prepared a few slides. Uh, Amanda has done a beautiful job of uh, positioning our organization and letting you know what we do. Um, so I am the Director of Scientific <coughs> Affairs for BioCanerax. Uh, I, in this position, I am privy to seeing a lot of the up-and-coming innovative research in Canada in the cancer biotherapy space, including uh, cell therapies that are coming up the pipeline from very early stage uh, discovery in the lab. Um, our mission, oh, I'm on the right side there. Excuse me. So, um, our mission as an organization is to catalyze and accelerate the transition of these discoveries from the lab, where they're not benefiting patients, but into clinical testing, where we can see if this will benefit patients and learn from those findings and take those findings back to the lab, to our researchers, to learn more about uh, what's right, what's wrong, what can we improve. Uh, so, we are a not for profit corporation. We are funded from the Networks of Centers of Excellence. We are a pan-Canadian multidisciplinary network of clinicians, basic scientists, engineers, economists, social science, legal scholars, etc., who are all reuniting our research expertise around the common problem of uh, meeting challenges that are facing uh, the translational path of these uh, clever, innovative biotherapeutic discoveries. And while there is a lot of activity in the research community in uh, development of cancer therapy, we're most excited about biotherapeutics. I don't know what your backgrounds are or what you may have heard in the press about uh, the excitement in immune oncology, vaccines for cancer, cell therapies for cancer. But what is most exciting for us is that we're seeing new evidence of very strong efficacy where previously chemotherapy was falling short in curing cancers and maintaining long-term cures. So we are starting in the, in the clinical trial space to see evidence of, of potent anti-tumor control, long-term responses, uh, in part through eliciting the immune response to attack cancer long after the drugs or these therapeutic platforms have been extinguished in the patient. Uh, and the other thing that we're very excited with biotherapies in general, but cell therapies in particular, is that they are extremely specific and selective for cancers. They are targeted to recognize cancer and not our other normal healthy tissues. And this is a problem, or actually rather it's an opportunity that defines an opportunity for uh, a new modality of, of cancer therapy that is not like chemo, which poisons all of our tissues, but poisons the cancer a little bit faster and is associated with a lot of comorbidity or side effects. A lot of these biotherapeutics are so selective that uh, side effects tend to be less, and uh, less severe, less in number. And so uh, I know that many here are interested in uh, stem cells and regenerative medicine, but I'm actually going to talk about uh, cell therapy applications specifically in cancer, but can certainly answer other questions as they arise. And very uh, easily defined, uh, adoptive cell therapy for cancer entails giving immune cells to a patient and those immune cells attack the patient's cancer. Uh, the cells that we use as a therapy, they can come from the patient himself or herself, from the tumor, from the blood. Uh, they can come from another donor. Uh, these cells target just cancer because cancers have unique features that distinguish themselves from the rest of our body. And the immune system has evolved to be very good at finding things that are different from the rest of our body and attacking only those things that are not our body. Um, so in many cases, the cell therapy platforms that are coming forward, they are cells that are selected from patients. There's already evidence of activity in the patient, but we're going to do better. We're going to take those cells out of the patient, ramp them up in some way in the lab, and give them back in a better, more active form to the patient. We're also learning now through a lot of science, and a lot of uh, great proposals are coming forward now from the Canadian research community about how to engineer cells to be even more cancer selective and more potent and targeted and active against cancer. And when we talk about the types of products that are cells themselves and are given to cancer patients to fight cancer, um, these cells do are, fall into one of two types of flavors, that either themselves are the army that attack cancer, or they go in and they induce an immune response in the patient, so the patient's immune response takes over to attack the cancer. Oops. 
And just to give a snapshot uh, of what we're seeing, because I have the lens of uh, an organization that is funding innovative discoveries in cancer in Canada, but also an eye on what is happening elsewhere in the world and is maybe coming to Canada. Right now, uh, there's some exciting work happening in clinical trials, uh, certainly in Toronto at Princess Margaret Hospital. This is a leading site in Canada where experts have learned how to harvest tumor reactive cells from the tumor of a patient. So this is personalized medicine. Those cells are taken out, they are re-stimulated in the lab and grown to high number, and high quality, and given back into the patient. So they're really growing an army to go back and treat that patient's individual cancer. Um, and another example is uh, a very promising anti-leukemia platform. Uh, this is research that's arising in Montreal, but it's going to be available to other sites in Canada, which is they're generating a variety of immune cell products that specifically recognize antigens that are preserved on a lot of leukemias. So you don't have to take an individual patient's uh, immune cells to recognize his or her own cancer. We can grow cells that are applicable to many people's cancers in the leukemia space. And so coming soon, uh, there's also a lot of research going on, learning how to, as I mentioned, engineer cells to basically say, well, you're not very good at recognizing tumors right now, but I'm going to give you a, a better uh, a better way to recognize tumors and be more potent when you get into the host and recognize the cancer. A very promising example of this is what I labeled as chimeric antigen receptors. That's just one technology that allows cells to become better armed and better targeted towards a cancer target. And the reason I raise this is this has been one of the breakthrough discoveries in immune therapy for cancer over the last few years. This is a news excerpt from uh, the New York Times of a pediatric patient who was frankly on death's door with a terrible burden of leukemia. She had failed all other uh, treatment options and she received this experimental therapy which is where her own cells were taken out. They were given the opportunity to recognize cancer by engineering this new receptor on the cell. This army of cells was given back to this girl and this treatment eliminated what calculated out to be kilograms of tumor mass in her system. Uh, and she's still alive today, uh, years later, and doing extremely well, playing soccer and doing all the things that kids should be doing. Um, and we talk a lot about getting excited in cancer biotherapy and possibly cell therapies with these blockbuster examples. But this clinical trial now has recruited about 60 patients as of my last count, and they have a 93% complete response rate for this type of cancer in pediatric patients, which is absolutely outstanding. And many of these are long-term responses. I think about 60% of the patients are alive years beyond what was expected and still have no sign of disease. So that's revolutionary in, in cancer, and it is on its way to coming to Canada. Mm -hmm. That's great. As you can see um, from, from Dr. Paro's uh, presentation, uh, BioCanRx is, is really a cutting-edge organization, and they are really doing fascinating work in, in, in accelerating the development of immunotherapies uh, towards towards the clinic. These, these are, are trials that are going on now, trials that will be going on in the future. And it's, it's a fairly new organization. It's just, just a, a year, year old. A year old. Mm -hmm. So that's, they've already accomplished a considerable amount in one year with very big plans for the future.